Hi, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining. Uh, Fran, I have 157, though. Do you want to give it three more minutes or do you want me to get started? I think we probably should. I don't know if, if um, the attendees could see us as of yet. I believe there are eight attendees on at this time and it's still a little early. Yes, I believe we should wait at least two more minutes. That's what okay. the invite said. Yes. Yeah, I'm so sorry, please hang on, folks. Yes, please hang on. We're sorry. We had a little technical difficulties today. And if you're out there, once again, welcome. Uh, hang tight. We will begin uh, at 2 o'clock. It is now 158. So thank you for your patience. I could just let you all know, whoever is listening at this point, that we are partnering with Dense Ply Serona with our road shows that we're taking across the country. And coming up next week, we're gonna be in San Antonio, Texas. So if you're from the area or you'd like to see beautiful San Antonio, join us. Um, you could register at uh, Eventbrite or Zon Academy. Um, we will then be heading over to Denver, Colorado in June and in July, Virginia Beach, Virginia. And there's more to come. So take a look at our sales flyer and also check our uh, website and Facebook, Twitter, we'll be posting all kinds of fun stuff about our road shows coming up. Yeah, bear with us folks. We'll give it in one more minute and we'll go ahead and start. Again, for those who have just joined us, Dave Sipperly and I are here to uh, discuss with you Lucitone Digital Print and optimizing workflows with that. And we're so happy that you decided to join us here at Zon Academy. David will be uh, putting up some questions for to poll the audience. So we'd really love it if you would just uh, answer the questions when they come up for us. And here's Dave. Thank you. All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So uh, thank you very much for joining and uh, thank you for spending your afternoon with us here at um, Dense Ply Serona and at the, the Zahn uh, webinar here. So I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, we've got a lot to cover today. So um, what I'd like to cover in the next hour, a little bit about the uh, industry and some stats, a little bit about the history and the brand of of Lucitone. Uh, then we'll jump right into the materials that make up the Lucitone digital print system. We'll talk about the workflow and show you some of the steps of what the workflow um, includes. And then we'll answer the question, why Dense Ply Serona and why Lucitone digital print? We'll discuss some of the training opportunities that are coming up in the future, as well as giving you access to the education portal, which is free of charge, totally open access to you. And then the best way of getting started with Lucitone digital print. So I'm going to jump right in. I can't see the chat box. So if people are typing in questions, uh, we can answer them at the end of this. And of course, you can unmute and ask questions at the end of this as well. Um, but the good news is this. Uh, the denture market is healthy. And most labs are saying 80% or more are saying that their denture business is good or booming. And that's great news. And 79% of labs say that their partial business is good or booming. And, and what I'm hearing on when I visit labs is that they're turning it away, away work because they simply just can't keep up with the demand. And if you look at the Fortune Business Magazine article uh, written last year, what they're saying is the denture market's going to grow a healthy six to seven percent by the year 2027. And the reasons for that, the number one reason was periodontal disease, the increase in it. But they also said the increase of digital dentures will open up access for not only more physicians, but for more laboratories and um, become more available for patients. And of course, the baby boomer population is growing and that is the population number that's just driving demand uh, for dentures. So dentures are not going away. And uh, of course, they are recession proof. So if you think we are in a recession, uh, then then of course they're they're needed. But we also have an increased demand, almost double digit growth in implant supported dentures and over dentures. 
So if we look at the way dentures are being made today, still most are doing the analog process. And 62% of that is packing, good old packing. And, and I just cannot believe that packing is still that popular with knowing what we know today. Um, so there is a, a question right there on the screen now. Are you currently creating your dentures with a digital workflow or an analog workflow? So please answer that poll if you can. Um, so if we look at people who are doing digital dentures, 46% of them are doing a combination of milling and printing. So they're probably printing a base and then they're milling their teeth. 42% of those people who are doing digital dentures are printing only. So they're printing bases and printing their teeth and putting the two together. And then 12% are milling only. Now, milling was our first digital denture. There's no other way. And, and there's nothing wrong with milling digital dentures. The fit is phenomenal. A digital record exists. The only problem is it takes a lot of time. So you cannot really ramp up your capacity or your throughput because it takes anywhere from two to four hours to mill a digital denture, one denture, and it ties up a five access milling machine for a long period of time. Um, so printing is really where it's at. And if you look at it, printing has been around for about three years. And if you look at that quote down at the bottom here where the arrow, 78% of labs say that printing quality has increased. And it really has increased dramatically in the last three years. Because if you look in that lower right-hand picture down below, that was one of the first generations of a printed denture. Certainly not aesthetic, seeing the roots of, or the cervicals of the teeth, really just not appropriate. So we've come a long way in a short amount of time. So I hope the results, if you'd like to know the results of that poll. Sure, post them. So 57% of our attendees are still in an analog workflow and 30, uh, I'm sorry, and 43% are now in a digital workflow. All right. That is great. All right. So everyone knows there's a shortage of technicians out there, right? And, and you see it every year in LMT, every month in LMT, but everywhere we, we see they can't find technicians. So what are they doing to find technicians or keep technicians from leaving the lab? Well, uh, they're investing in new labor saving technology to augment the output. So this is sort of like the Toyota way. Machines and technology is not going to replace people. You can't, but it will augment the amount of work that we can do. So if you're really seriously thinking about getting into printing, this is the time because it's it's changing quickly, but now is the time. The other way that uh, what other things that labs are doing to combat the labor shortage is they're paying higher wages to keep the people from drifting to a competitive lab. And of course, there's always outsourcing both within the US and outside the US. Um, so let's continue. Lucitone Digital Print is a perfect system because it's indicated for dentures, it's indicated for partial dentures, it's indicated for over dentures. So in the upper right hand corner, that is a printed Lucitone denture. You can see we have a printed uh, partial denture in the upper right hand corner with a uh, metal uh, clasp. Um, this is not a flexible partial denture. So this is be like your traditional acrylic rigid uh, partial denture. And then in the lower right, you can see here a Lucitone digital print denture with hollowed out holes out there to pick up the retentive caps of a conus over denture. So here's a mandibular lower, lower uh, conus case that you see in the lower right hand picture. So Lucitone can do all your aspects of your workflow in your removable department. People think it's just dentures, just full arch. It is not the case. So if you look at our history of our timeline, the year 1914, when the Red Sox sold Babe Ruth to the Yankees and the U.S. entered World War I, we introduced the TrueBite system the first system for denture teeth and to do dentures um, in, in full mouth prosthodontics. But what's interesting is in 1968, we created Lucitone uh, 199 denture base for heat packing, heat cured uh, acrylic. And I can't believe it was that long ago because it's still a bestseller today. In 1980, we introduced IPN, Interpenetrating Polymer Network, our chemistry for our premium denture teeth with um, with the uh, Bioform IPN tooth line. Of course, in 95, we introduced Portrait. But 51 years later, we made Lucitone 199 in a print resin. And still, by the way, high impact, 
and very, uh, very strong and aesthetic. And then 42 years later, after the introduction of IPN material, we introduced it in a resin formulation for printing. So a lot of industry first and a lot of technology. And I think the, the safest bet to say is, you know, labs and doctors know the Lucitone name, know the performance and the material performance and characteristics and the properties of this material. So it is um, still performing well today. So we're going to talk about some of the individual components of the of the system, and then we'll talk about the actual workflow of the system. So the things in red are the highlights of, of the Lucitone denture base. It comes in a... Uh, one liter bottle that you see there. It's for validated printers only. We'll get to that in a second, but it's the only print resin today on the market that is high impact. Uh, it meets both uh, specifications to be considered high impact, and that is the uh, uh, work of fracture and fracture toughness. So, uh, and we excel in both of those areas. You don't need to mix it. You don't need to roll it. You don't need to heat it up. It's just pour and print, has a three-year shelf life, it comes in the five Lucitone shades. Everyone knows four, and the most popular is original. Second most popular is, is light, followed by light reddish pink, then dark pink. And there's a fifth shade here, original opaque. And that has about 15% more opacity added to the original formulation. So it can help mask metal frameworks, or it can help mask uh, pickups, locators, ERA attachments, things like that within the denture base. So specifically for over dentures. Out of that one bottle, which is about $866, you get about 50 bases out of that. So if you're looking at a breakdown, it's about $18.50 for a printed base. Um, and you can see there's the shade tabs that we have for it as well. So we do make a shade tab for it. Let's see who's 3D printing. I'm going to launch another question. Are you okay with that? Sure, go right ahead. Okay. Thank you for your answers. All right, we'll make that go away. Um, last summer, in July of 2022, we introduced Lucitone Digital IPN print resin, as you see here. Um, and that denture that you see on the left is Lucitone Digital Print Denture Base. IPN resin, the HC libraries to design those teeth, and Fuse 3 total. So that denture is not polished. It comes out of the curing unit looking like that. So we'll get more into that in just a second. The big selling point of Lucitone uh, Digital Print IPN is that it's available in 18 shades. You're going to get all 16 Vita shades plus two bleach. Again, pour and print, no rolling, no mixing, no heating up. That too has a three year shelf life from the date of manufacturer. Um, and it's two to four times more wear resistant than other print resins today on the market. You roughly get about 64 arches per bottle. This is a half liter bottle, 500 ml. And that comes out to be about $12 per arch of teeth material cost wise. You can see we have all 16 shades plus a BL1 and a BL3. And I always get asked the question, what bleach shades do they correspond to in a portrait shade guide? You can see that portrait shade guide down at the bottom there. And uh, the three on the lower left side are the uh, bleach shades for portrait. So a BL1 corresponds to a portrait white four and a BL3 corresponds to a portrait white two. And I did create a shade uh, conversion chart on the bottom there. So if you want to take this, uh, take a picture of this with your phone, this is a good time to do it. It's pretty hard to find conversions on bleach shades. And this is one I put together for the IPN resin. So all 18 shades. And everyone always asks this question, Dave, how good is digital IPN compared to portrait IPN? Because portrait IPN has been around a long time. And if you look at the flexual strength over here, it is roughly the same. OK, um, we did a wear resistant test. It's a chewing test that we do. We test all of our competitive teeth, our own teeth and all market uh, materials that we bring to market using this chewing cycle test. It's 400,000 chewing cycles and we measure the uh, the volume loss of a tooth. So uh, you can see it's 0 0.09. 
Uh, so it's basically the same. If you look at the flex module strength, basically the same. If you look at the compressive strength of both, it's basically the same. So uh, I think you can honestly say that a digital IPN is as good or better versus the carded portrait IPN card that's been around since 1995. And it won Townie Award Best Prosthetic Denture Tooth 12 consecutive years running. So it's just not the teeth and the tooth resin. It's the libraries, and this is where it gets a little confusing for some customers because there's lots of libraries that are out there. Three years ago, we came out with Portrait and Genyos digital libraries that would allow you to design your denture teeth and morph it into any shape or size that you want. Last year, we came out with Portrait Digital HC. HC standing for highly characterized and Genyos Digital HC, highly characterized library. So there's two in red are new from last year. Um, if you look in the upper right hand corner over here, this is the digital Genyos library, the regular one. And you can see here is the HC library. There's a lot of surface texture on the facial of those teeth. Okay. And this is a uh, screenshots from a three shape. So our Genyos is our European tooth line. We've made it in Europe for, for many, many years, and it's also quite popular in Canada. So if you like the thicker, bulkier tooth, you like the bigger necks, um, this is a perfect tooth for you. So it, it complements a, a European style tooth like an Ivoclar or a Vita. Uh, if you like the more traditional portrait, uh, or the traditional bioform molds, which tend to be a little more tapered, have a little more pear shape to them. Uh, we have the portrait library and the portrait HC library. And of course, portrait is a tooth manufactured for the North American market. Now there's two ways of getting this library. You can simply buy it outright for $2,000 and renew it each and every year for $500. And it's for three shape only, my apologies, but it's only for three shape. I can't do anything about that. Or an option two, if you commit to a $5,000 sale of Lucitone digital print material or buy a starter bundle, as we call it, you can get the libraries free of charge. And then all we ask you is buy one bottle of resin or spend a minimum of $500 a year of other digital consumable materials with us. You can maintain the libraries as long as you maintain a minimum $500 a year spent. So those are the important digital tooth libraries that you use for three shape to design your teeth. And we get a lot of other comments about where else can I find the digital libraries? Well, Software 20 by InLab, InLab Software 20 has the carded tooth libraries for the 3D IPN teeth and for portrait teeth. ExoCAD has libraries for 3D carded teeth and portrait carded teeth. So you can't do morphing of those molds with the uh, uh, tooth molds uh, with those libraries. It's only for creating a denture base to create the sockets for the pre-manufactured teeth. Okay. So, but those carded tooth libraries, they are available and they are free um, because they do force you to buy the carded teeth, but carded teeth have a lot of advantages. They're pre-made, they're aesthetic, they're wear resistant, and it's the fastest way to do a digital denture because you're not waiting for a mill or a, or a printer to manufacture a set of teeth. So you already have them pre-made. This is a great shot here because on the right-hand side is the standard digital library for the Genyos tooth. You can see it on the right-hand side. And with one click of a button, one click, you can now switch over to the HC highly characterized library and design and add in all of this aesthetic and all this morphology and contouring and, and, and um, characterization of the facial of the teeth. So that's pretty powerful. So you could do a good denture here and a better denture here, two offerings, same materials. Don't have to clean and switch out your printers just by clicking a button on your computer. So pretty powerful that that's what you want to do. Or you could do a good, better, and best denture offering by mixing up your materials if you want to. But that's just more to inventory and more printers to clean in between print cycles. So we have denture base. We have premium print resin. We also have something called the Lucitone Digital Value Economy Tooth and Trial Placement Resin. So this is our try-in resin. It comes in a one-liter bottle. 
if you're going to print a try in a biofunctional try in like I have right here in my hand, uh, you'll get about 39 arches, give or take, out of a bottle. So it comes out to be about $19 to $20 per arch. Or this material is also indicated for in 510K compliant for denture teeth. So you can print economy denture teeth with this resin and the material cost there would be about $6 an arch because you'll get about 128 arches per bottle. So it's a great resin. Um, the only disadvantage of this, in my opinion, is it comes in six shades. It comes in the six shades that you see there, but that supports 70 to 80% of all work that's out there. So it's really not that big of a drawback. A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, and a bleach three. Okay. So that's our try and resin or our economy tooth print resin. And I love this slide because this shows now the depth and the breadth of the denture system that we've created at Densply Serona. It's always going to be the same denture base, printed Lucitone digital print um, denture base. But now we give you a carded tooth option. So these are the 3D IPN teeth. They're specifically designed to prevent intaglio breakthrough. And that's the, uh, of course, the the neck and the, the roots of the tooth showing on the tissue side of the denture. Um, you get seven upper anterior molds, seven lower anterior molds, plus a 10 and 33 degree posterior option, um, wax-free packaging. So this is plug in and play. I mean, you just test fit, dry fit these into the socket, they fit, you uh, condition them, you fuse them in, you bond them in, you cure it, it is done. So this comes out to be about $49 an arch, okay? And you would have to order your teeth through your dealer, like Zahn, or you have a care, you carry an inventory within your lab. But this is the fastest way, uh, again, because it only takes about 10 minutes to put these teeth into the denture base and cure it. And you're getting known aesthetics, known material performance in all 16 shades plus two bleach. In the 3D IPN teeth, we make a shade guide for it as well right here. If you want to mill, your denture teeth because you have a mill laying around or you do a lot of milling already. Uh, Dense Plicerona's multi-layer PMMA disc is validated for not only temporary crown and bridge, but also for denture teeth. So we have a great multi-layer that has 13 layers of aesthetics built into that disc. It's about $92, $93, give or take. So that's $31 for an arch if you want to mill out an arch within a PMMA disc. We give you our value resin for printing an economy tooth. And then we give you our Lucitone digital print for our premium resin. And you can see the prices there. So four different tooth options, same denture base, same fusing system, same curing system. That's why I think this is wonderful because you can do what's best for you, best on, best on your labor or your time allocation or what equipment you have available in your lab. So I think this makes it pretty powerful, a complete system, all FDA approved. So we have a bonding system and there, you're gonna hear this often, fuse one, fuse two, fuse three. Fuse one is this large bottle up top there that you see here, the silver bottle. That's only used when you're dealing with carded teeth or if you're dealing with milled PMMA, because in this case, they're PMMA disc or teeth and they're cured, right? They're hard. So they're already manufactured. They're already to shape. So because they're cooked, if you will, and they're hard, right? they're already polymerized, we have to soften them up a little bit. So this bonding agent here called Fuse 1 is used to soften up that cured PMMA. Now for all print resins, and then continuing with the bonding of carded teeth or milled PMM teeth, you need fuse two. Fuse two, it goes into the tooth socket and the tooth interface, whether that's printed or milled or carded. Okay, press it in, you tack light it. Fuse three is the final sealer or air barrier because resins are just that, they're printable resins. They needed uh, an air inhibiting layer or an oxygen inhibiting, in, inhibiting layer to be fully cured. So you'll paint on fuse three, either on the entire denture surface or just the cervical of the interface between the tooth and the gingiva and cure it. So we got fuse one, two, and three. For carded or PMMA, you need all three. 
for any print resin, when you're going from print teeth or printed teeth to printed base, you just use steps two and three. That's it, really simple. So this is few step three total here. And this is a denture that was designed and printed with IPN resin, and it was not polished. It was just painted uh, on the facial and on the teeth and on the uh, intaglio, I'm sorry, and on the palate, um, Fuse 3 total. So if you're doing the entire denture with Fuse 3, you don't need to polish. Um, you get about 25 dentures out of a bottle of this resin. If you're doing just the cervical and the interproximals of the tooth and, and gingiva junction, you'll get about 50 arches done per, 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 per bottle. Um, this is our new curing unit. And yes, you need a validated curing unit to properly cure Lucitone systems. It takes a very specific wavelength of light that we're not going to publish. That's proprietary. But it also needs heat. So our curing units has very specific heat in there. And the heat is sort of, in our opinion, the secret sauce to make this stuff high impact and to make it strong. So this is a uh, $3,330 uh, $300, uh, light curing unit. It came out just at LMT um, and it's doing quite well. It can fit five dentures in there, takes a very small footprint and it takes about an hour for curing time. Um, we also have a large capacity curing unit for those large production labs that want to do nine dentures at a time. This will roughly take an hour and a half to cure up to nine dentures. It's a bigger machine. It has a turntable inside it. It's $5,000. Okay, much larger footprint, but designed for capacity. All of these are LED. All of these have no flip technology, so you don't have to stop and flip the denture over. There's enough intensity, light, and heat to cure the entire denture all the way through. And that curing unit on the far right-hand side, you might have seen that before. That's the old Eclipse processing unit that was retrofitted to cure LDP. Um, this is no longer available. This was our original curing unit for the system that came out in 2019. It is no longer available. It is now discontinued. We'll continue to manufacture bulbs for it. But that was using old halogen technology. And that machine was really never intended to run, you know, eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, seven days or five days a week. So labs who had this machine did experience a lot of bulbs burning out or some errors with the machine functioning. So uh, it still has a, if it's still under warranty, all of these machines have a two year warranty. So we'll honor it with a replacement of its own kind. Or if we're out of that particular one, then with the small curing unit that you see there. So these are the only three validated curing units to cure Lucitone digital print. Can't use auto flashes, can't use other curing units. Um, we know that this works, it's tested, it's validated because the last thing you wanna do is put a denture that's uncured or denture resin that is uncured in somebody's mouth because we know resin is toxic. We're wearing gloves, we're using in ventilation. Uh, it can even burn some people if it gets on your skin. So uh, printed resins are, are fairly nasty stuff. So you wanna make sure it's cured. You don't wanna do anything to put patients at risk. And now you're probably tired of listening to me. So I'll play a very short video. It's about 30 seconds long. So what do you need to get started? You need a validated printer. There's tons of printers out there. There's a lot of myths and misconceptions out there and rumors out there about what printers you can and can't use. I am telling you today, there are only two printers that you can use out there. Carbons, Carbon M series. So there's an M1, M2, M2D, and an M3. And the other printer is a Sega, and they have two. There's the Sega Max UV, and these, there's the Asiga 4 Pro K. So anything else you might hear anywhere else like uh, Hay Gears or, or Sprint Ray, that is a rumor, okay? So you need a validated printer, Asiga or Carbon. Both are fantastic, both work great. 
You need a curing unit. There's only three of those. The in-lab speed cure that we just discontinued, the DS cure, and the DS large digital cure. You're going to need fuse one, two, and three in a tack light. You're going to need an ultrasonic cleaner for your lab. You're going to need a CAD system and a tooth library. And you're going to need isopropyl alcohol. So those are basically the major components that you need to get started in printing today. Um, I love the Asiga 4, um, 4 Pro K or Pro 4K because it's a beast. It can do 16 arches in about three and a half hours. That's the print plate. So it's a good size. Um, if you look at the, and, and at the same time, it can do 12 arches of teeth, okay, in about three hours, give or take. So uh, that's that's good capacity and that's that's good production. If you look at the Max Review, it has a much smaller footprint, much smaller print table. You can do about four arches in three hours um, in terms of uh, denture bases. And then in terms of tooth arches, you can do about uh, four arches in about three and a half hours. It depends on how you escalate them or orientate your, your denture teeth. So uh, that's super critical um, in terms of the angle and of course the fencing that you put on to support the teeth as you print them. But these machines are workhorses. So what we do see is a lot of labs buy the large uh, Pro 4K to print all their bases. And then they'll also buy a Max UV or two of them and they'll dedicate them just to their uh, their tooth options. One will be dedicated A1, A2, and so on and so forth. But if you really want to crank out volume, having two printers will be critical. And that Max UV really does a nice job fitting the need for printing tooth arches. You can print full arches. You can print individual teeth. You can print segments. Seems like labs are doing segments most of the time. Segments can fit more on the printer and it takes less time to print uh, because you're angling your teeth usually at 60 or 80 degrees. And so uh, obviously the, the, you know, the more you load up on an angle, the more time it's going to take to print. But if you print flat, now you're going to start losing accuracy and so forth. So everything's a trade-off with printing, but we've validated these printers and give you illustrated technique guides on the best way to get the best results in the quickest way possible. And all of that are in our illustrated technique guides that we uh, created for, for Asiga and we've created them for carbon as well. So, so far, Dave, we've received uh, some statistics back from the attendees. 50% are printing and 50% aren't. So it's split right down the middle. What do you think about that? I think that represents the industry quite well because people are dabbling in it right now and other people are waiting to see and 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 printing is is not the future it's now it's it's here and people are having a lot of success doing it and they're increasing their volume their throughput their capacity and you know this is all about workflows and and saving labor and doing more with a lesser trained skilled technician force right i mean anyone can do this fran i you're not a dental technician i've seen you print and make your own denture and it was absolutely beautiful right yeah. so i mean i'm not a denture technician myself and i can do this so we can train anyone to do this cuz the the hardest part of all of this is the the design portion but running the machines doing the fusing doing the finishing that is really easy. Anyone can do that. Um, so that's that's huge. So no matter what print system you're going to use, you're going to have to scan your records. And if you're going with a brand new denture patient, no records, never had a denture before, you're going to need to get a custom tray and you're going to get a set of bite rims and you're going to scan those items into your uh, three shape or your ExoCAD and you're going to create a denture design. OK, it's simple as that. Then you're going to send that over to your printer and you're going to print out what it is that you've designed. And of course, like any printer, after you print it, you got to knock off the fencing. You're going to now have to clean and get all that print residue off of, off of your appliance, whether it's a night guard or a denture, doesn't matter. Then, of course, every after everything is cleaned and dry, you're going to then fuse or bond the teeth to your denture base and cure. So, in a nutshell, that's basically our Lucitone digital print system right there that you see on the screen. So now we're going to just take you into a little virtual uh, cooking show, so to speak. So after you designed your denture, you print the base. And it's always printing the base. And of course, in the base, you see these T-bars right there. Those T-bars are needed. Um, 
in 3Shape, you can add that as part of the software. And in lab, if you're designing in lab, you'd have to go to a Mesh Mixer and put them on there. But that's that's critical for the accuracy of the print. Uh, of course, you do your fencing. So after you print, you break off all of your fencing, you break off all your supports, and you can see there's a lot of residue uh, on, on those appliances right there. So no problem. Take an ultrasonic cleaner. I don't like these big part washers. I know they're popular, but an ultrasonic cleaner works the best and you're saving your alcohol and making it go the furthest. So you're going to then put your denture base that's printed uh, with the T-bars still in place. They stay on until the very end. And you put it in a rigid glass or plastic container of isopropyl alcohol, put it in your ultrasonic cleaner for two minutes. You're going to take it out. You're going to take fresh isopropyl alcohol and you're going to clean the tooth sockets. Okay. Once you clean the tooth sockets, you're going to then put it in a new batch of a uh, container of new alcohol, just enough to cover everything, and put it in your ultrasonic cleaner for one more minute. Now it's clean. Okay. You blow dry it, let it air dry for a little bit. You need to get that excess isopropyl alcohol to evaporate off the appliance. Okay. So that's important. If you see any shiny spots, that's still leftover residue that you need to wash off. So uh, a good soft bristle, bristle brush to clean out the sockets is critical, then allow it to dry. If you're printing your teeth, you're going to repeat the same thing. If you're using carded teeth now, now you got to condition those carded teeth or those milled PMMA teeth with this conditioner step one, fuse step one. And we do it on a hot plate because if you do any chemical reaction on, with and add heat to it, it speeds up the chemical reaction. So this only takes a matter of a couple of minutes to uh, have this reach temperature, soak your teeth, dry off your teeth. Now you're ready for bonding. Okay, so you're only doing this for carded or milled PMMA. And here is uh, Jimmy Stiegel. He's a Dense Placer own employee and a master of Lucitone digital print. Uh, his lecture series online and, and in person are quite popular. He's loading up a carbon printer there at the Academy. You can see he's printed a bunch of arches and segments of teeth. And now he's taking them off the print plate and washing everything in alcohol. You can see he's a good worker. He works really fast. Um, so you got to do this regardless of printer, regardless of print material you're doing. These steps are all basically the same. The biggest mistake labs make here is they push the isopropyl alcohol. The last wash always has to be new, fresh, clean alcohol. Uh, people push it. Alcohol is expensive. Yes, we know. Um, but um, that could be a sign of problems down the road if you're using dirty alcohol. So, of course, now everything's washed and dried. Jimmy is then going to smooth and clean the print um, stubs off the uh, off the teeth that you see there. And then you're going to use Fuse 2. What you see there is he's putting Fuse 2, which is the same shade as the denture base. So Fuse 2 comes in five different shades. Our print resin comes in five different shades. He puts a little Fuse 2 in each tooth socket. He's press fitting it down with his hands. He's wiping off the excess Fuse 2 resin. And then he's going to tack light it in place. That will just freeze the material in place while you do the rest of the arch. Then you can stick it in the curing unit. So this is a critical part, but tacking it is really important. You don't have to worry about it, teeth moving or shifting. There's no hydraulic lift or anything once you tack everything in place. Okay, so this takes about 10 minutes, give or take, uh, doing a full arch, one arch at a time. So here's just a, a picture of the Fuse 2. You can see how you put dollops into the tooth socket, you tack light it, and then when you're all set, the entire arch is finished, you can take fuse three total now, and you can paint just around the cervical and the interproximals of the teeth to seal that interface, because this is resin, so you got to seal it in order for it to be cured, okay? So that's one option, or you could take the total and paint it on the entire denture surface. It's personal preference based on what you want to do. So now you're going to cure it after you uh, tacked all of the uh, the teeth in place and you painted on your fuse three total, you're going to cure it. So this machine was a total of 23 minutes of curing. I'm sorry, 26 minutes. The small curing unit is 60 minutes, give or take five minutes or so because it sometimes needs to heat up and cool down. And the large capacity is about uh, 90 minutes. Then once it's cured, then 
you can take a cutoff wheel, cut off the uh, T-bar supports and spot grind and spot polish. Um, here, this is a slide though of doing a traditional polish on the entire denture. So cut off the sprues, grind them down with carbides and do a traditional pumice and high shine or triple E polish that you wanna do. So yes, you can completely polish a Lucitone digital print denture system using your own lab protocol. Nothing's changed there. If you wanna save 10 or 15 minutes per denture and not polish, then you can paint fuse three total on the entire surface of the denture and cure it. And now you're saving an extra 10 or 15 minutes per denture. That's pretty significant. And you're getting consistent, predictable results. Why did we come out with fuse three total? If you have a CAD designer in the other room designing these beautiful denture teeth and putting in all this effect and surface irregularities, the last thing we want is at the end of the day, the person in your polishing room polishing heavy handedly or, you know, too aggressively and now smoothing out all of that beautiful texture that your CAD technician put time and energy in to create. So it was done as a safeguard so you didn't over polish. Now we realize you don't have to polish anything at all. This is sufficient. And we've done this with 400,000 chewing cycles and we've showed no significant wear of the fuse three total so it's not a surface coat it's not an opti glaze this becomes because you paint it on on uncured resin this becomes integrated and in, in, in part of the denture base it it integrates in the raw material before it's cured so it's it's just not a topical you're not painting it on something that's already cured it's not a finish it it actually incorporates and blends itself into the final denture so we're um we're coming up to about 40 minutes now and so you know a lot of people ask why should i invest into your system dave what's so special about lucitone digital print and and first of all i think everyone knows the legacy of lucitone and ipn in the industry we just happen to digitize it now i think the other thing is um the denture base it was the first real aesthetic denture base and it's the only one that's high impact today uh, we know the performance of IPN. The entire system is 510K compliant. So you can rest at night. You ever get audited by the FDA? And, and we did a seminar or a workshop two years ago in Charlotte. We had 70 labs come in to take a peek at all of this while we were developing it. And over half of the people in that room were audited by the FDA. So, um, you know, printing is uh, kind of uh, the, the wild frontier out there. People are printing all kinds of things. And the FDA wants to make sure you're printing something that's compliant, or if you're the manufacturer now that you are registered with the FDA. Um, I think the fact that we've got multiple workflows based on your labor needs or haves and what equipment you have or don't have. I think we give you the flexibility and breadth of multiple options. We don't force you into just one way. Uh, we give you great training, education, support. Uh, both with uh, the training that we do as a new user when you buy a system, but also our online academy. And Zon has an online academy as well. Uh, phenomenal fit, performance, and aesthetics. Um, we have third-party data. And of course, we've got a very active field sales team out there, 54 specialists out there to help you, four DIS or digital implementation specialists to help you, and two tech specialists to help you. And then Zahn's got their entire uh, tech, uh, tech team in, in Wakefield, Massachusetts as well. So a lot of support out there uh, from the manufacturer, from your distributor. And so uh, that's why I think Lucitone is one of the better systems out there in the entire marketplace. If you're interested in getting training, uh, we have courses in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina at our academy on a regular basis. So just reach out to your local rep or your Zon rep and we give you more information there. Um, this portal is I'm super excited about. You should take a screenshot of this now uh, using the um, quick code there. Um, this curriculum site is is its website is open to anyone, it's free. It answers 99% of the questions that I get every day about Lucitone digital print. Um, if you wanna go there and do a self-study and you can get 16 uh, MBC credits free of charge and everything, instructional videos, how-to videos, illustrated technique guides are all there. 
Um, so I would strongly encourage you to go there, look at what we have to offer. Here's just some of the downloads that you can get on the left-hand side, repair and reline PDF with pictures, step-by-step -step of how to do a surface repair, to fractured tooth, a hard reline, a soft reline. Okay, so we always get that question, can I reline it? Yes, what do I use? Lucitone HIPAA. Uh, what about a soft reline, Tokiyama? Yeah, it's all in there. You've got illustrated guides for printing a partial. If you're an Asiga user, we give you an illustrated technique guide from print to finish. All of the steps plus screenshots of your computers and of your Asiga screens to load up a job. So we've really done a great job giving you everything you need at your fingertips 24-7 portal. Now, if you want to see more about this or you want to see how good this stuff looks uh, firsthand, we have more road shows up and coming. The next one is uh, May 19th is on in San Antonio. Um, I will be in Denver um, with, uh, with this event as well. So here's another great way of getting education credits, but more importantly, seeing some hands-on and getting some training as you're, uh, at, while you're there. The next uh, course similar to this one that's virtual is going to be uh, May 18th on um, how to design digital dentures using three shape. So that's, uh, that's, you know, most labs that I've run across, that is what they're using. They're using three shape dental designer, and they're cranking out dentures with it and partials as well. So I think what digital solutions can we offer you to help you with your removable department? Think about looking at your removable department today. What issues are you having? And don't tell me you're not having issues because it's it's everything from uh, I get too much stone stuck in my teeth and it takes too much time to, um, you know, damage or breakage during divesting. It's capacity issues. It's throughput issues. And I asked this question, and, it, and I hate to ask this, but what happens to your denture setup technician if they leave you, have an accident, or, or die tomorrow? What would you do to backfill them? And the answer is, you can't backfill them because those types of technicians don't exist anymore. They're hard to find. And how long would it take to get a denture technician, a traditional wax up uh, person to learn how to set up dentures? It takes years to become good at that, where now that learning curve is weeks to months with, with denture, uh, digital denture designs. So we know that a lot of labs having throughput issues, they're turning away work. If you're a crown and bridge lab and you're not doing dentures, you know you get asked every day, hey, when are you going to do dentures? Because you have one or two doctors that will turn, turn you, you know, offer you dentures tomorrow if you did them. And you don't want to do them because they're dirty, messy, and lousy, and it's too much time. You already got three shape in your lab. You've got a denture designer in sitting there. If you can design full arch, you can design crown and bridge and over dentures and abutments. They can design dentures. It's easy. Okay. And you've got the printers already, or you can get a printer. And if you don't have a printer yet and you're not sure, well, if you've got a five axis mill laying around because you're milling zirconia, start doing one denture a week with that mill that's not being used. Or if you bought a printer and you're just printing models, can't we do one print cycle a day or a week just to do a denture or two? Because, you know, everyone's familiar with the race to the bottom for the $79 zirconia crown, you know, um, and why play in that game when uh, you're printing, you buy a carbon or a C, you got to print models that are 15 bucks. You can now print a denture and get 300 to $400 for that, for that one appliance coming off that printer. So I think the economics are there. Um, so think about your labor shortage or lack of skilled technicians and how would you backfill that technician? Are you truly happy with your consistency and throughput in your denture department today? Are you looking for growth opportunities or expansion opportunities, but not sure where to go? <clears throat> now, clear aligners, are you thinking? Sleep apnea devices? Or are you thinking about dentures? Okay, and here's another question that just popped up. Are you interested in a SEGA and LDP? The answer would be either yes or no. So please reply to that. We'll give you a couple of minutes and Fran will share the results in just a few minutes. All right. Um, and what are your thoughts about digital dentures? Because there's a lot of myths and misconceptions out there. Printing is the way to go, but there's nothing wrong with milling. The only problem with milling is it's a throughput. But if you want to start with milling your dentures first, why not? 
You know, the design is going to be the same whether you're print or mill. The only thing different is you're sending it to a printer rather or to a mill rather than a printer. Okay, in some regards, milling is easier. Okay, so if you're tired of that race to the bottom in your Crown Bridge Lab, you might want to consider adding dentures now. This is the time. And, and I'm going to just do some really simple math here. Um, we know it takes that if you're doing traditional dentures now, we know that digital dentures can save you 15 minutes minimum up to 45 minutes of labor per denture when you go digital. That's rather significant. Okay. And 10 or 15 minutes of it is just polishing. 10 or 15 minutes of it is just getting stone out of the inner proximals and in between teeth during divesting. Okay. So that's a fair amount of savings of labor. So we know it takes on average 45 to 60 minutes of labor to make a digital denture. Most of that is scanning and designing. Then it's 10 minutes of, of fusing teeth. It's about another 10 minutes of miscellaneous and taking care of the printer and doing a, you know, a polish. So 45 to 60 minutes maximum of labor for a digital denture. So I put labor at $40 because I'm thinking, okay, you're paying someone about $22, $24 an hour, plus their benefits, plus, you know, uh, other taxes and fees. So let's just call that labor $40 an hour. It's $32 in material. Let's just round it up to 40 because there's always going to be some miscellaneous. And you can sell that digital denture for 300 bucks. If you look at the LMT last price survey that they did, a printed denture is getting about $300. A mill denture is getting about $400. Yes, mill dentures do cost significantly more material cost-wise because you're doing uh, disc and pre-manufactured teeth typically. Um, so you're looking at $220 gross profit per denture. Not bad. Now, we know people with one carbon, we know people with two Asigas that are doing up to 30 dentures a day with one or two printers, one or two people. That's $6,600 gross profit per day. If you're working four days a week, like lots of labs do, that's a little over $26,000 gross per month from a machine and a person or two that you did not have to hire. They're, they're just doing auxiliary work. That's, that's fairly significant money, and that's fairly significant growth without investing into new people. So uh, there are plenty of stories out there. Uh, Ford Dental Lab, that is a literally a two-person de denture department cranking it with digital dentures. There's a, uh, a lab called Crown Design. They were crown and bridge only. They are now doing dentures and they are cranking it. So there's lots of stories out there of people having big success with this. Where people struggle, uh, and I, and I want to say thank you. Here's my last slide. But I, I want to show, uh, I have an appendix of some slides created and it will open up to some Q&A here. But I do have a slide here that I want to show you. And that is and I can't believe I can't find it right, right now. There are three real easy ways for people to um, get involved with dentures. And that is the healing denture, okay? Think about this, the immediate denture. Patient presents themselves in the chair. They have some teeth, but they're really a mess and they need to be extracted. So let that doctor take their intraoral scanner doesn't, I don't care what brand it is, scan that patient, send that scan to you. Now you've got, of course, enough teeth in there for a proper scan. You can virtually extract those diseased teeth with your uh, uh, virtual extractor in your three shape in your software. You can, of course, bring them back in for a water print to design their new denture. And then you print their final denture. It's a piece of cake. So that's the easiest way to get involved with digital because labs say, well, my, lab, my, my doctors aren't asking for a digital denture. Time out. Are they asking for a packed denture or a poor denture? No, they're asking for a denture. They just want it to look good and they just want it to fit well. So a immediate is a quick way to get those doctors sending you those digital files and sending them back a, 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 a digital denture. That's, that's really an easy way. The next best way for a doctor to get involved with your lab and for you to get comfortable with doing digital dentures is the reference denture. So a patient already presents them to the doctor with an existing denture, but they want a new one. And a lot of doctors, what they do is they'll go back to a, taking an analog impression and a, make a custom tray and get a set of bite rims. That's 
forget about that. Take their existing denture, whether it's in good shape or not, do a uh, border molding of it, do a wash and pressing of that denture, and use that existing denture as your custom tray, as your bite rim. Then the doctor can scan that denture with their intraoral scanner extra orally and send you that file, or they can send you the denture and you can scan it with your three shape or your exocad or your dental wing scanner, or your in-lab scanner, doesn't matter. And you can digitize it, but maybe the patient's close enough where they can drive over to the lab. You can, they can, you can scan it for them. Then of course you can clean it, disinfect it and give it back to them. So they're not without their denture. So the reference denture and the immediate denture are the quickest and easiest ways for labs to get comfortable doing dentures. Okay. The labs that have the most success with digital dentures just do it and they tell their doctors they're doing it. Now, the benefits for the doctors are even more than the laboratory. Yes, you can save money, increase your throughput, and become very profitable with digital. But for the clinician, they're going to save one, two, or three appointments. How many times does a denture patient come back after the final denture is done and delivered and they come back for adjustments? Anywhere from two to up to six times. And they usually don't charge for those. The digital fit is so good on these digital dentures. If the impression is good, the fit's going to be 100% replica of that impression. It'll fit. You can hear it snap. You can hear it pop. And you can see the patient's eyes bug out because they're not used to a fit that good. So they don't come back. It eliminates all those post-insertion visits, but it also saves one or two visits on the front end. So significant savings of chair time for the clinician. And let's face it, clinicians make about uh, $8 a minute. That's $480 uh, an, an hour, and that's just minimum. So for every visit you can save them, that opens up the chair for another patient to make more money for that doctor. Two, the digital record exists. So if it's lost, broken, or stolen, um, that patient just has to call their doctor and say, I need a new denture. They call you or email you and say, print a new one, a new denture in one appointment or in two. It's unbelievable. So I'm going to wrap it up here. I want to say thank you for spending your time with me this afternoon. We're going to open it up to Q&A. We've got about six minutes left. Um, so Fran, comments Thanks, or questions? Please. We thank you so much for joining us today, David, and that was a great presentation. We do have one question. It's from Carolyn, and she'd like to know, when you said anyone could do this, do you mean as long as you follow regional registration uh, requirements or regulation requirements? Yeah, so if you're making a denture, uh, first of all, <laughs> Uh, you do not need to be a CDT in order to work in a lab, right? So when I, first of all, I said anyone can make this. Anyone with almost any skill set can make this. That's how easy it is. But yes, anyone in a dental office uh, could make a digital denture or anyone in a dental lab could. I mean, it takes education and skill, but it is something that is easy to learn. So remember, you do not need to be a licensed CDT to make a denture. Uh, anyone can make a denture delivered to a dentist. The dentist inserts it in the patient's mouth. The dentist assumes liability responsibility for that appliance. So hopefully that answers that question. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I do want to let everybody know that upcoming on Zon Academy, we have Cole Horax and Daniel Alter, and they're going to be discussing the F8 scanner and utilizing the latest innovation on designing an, a digital denture. So that's coming up next on May 18th. Uh, we will be at Lab Day West. That's May 12th and 13th. You can come to the Zon booth and also at the FDLA on June 10th and 11th. Uh, for some education and also visit uh, the Zahn uh, booth. Our upcoming road shows, 519 San Antonio, June 23rd, Denver, Colorado, and July 21st, Virginia Beach, Virginia, and many more to come from now until the end of the year. So please check Zahn Academy and our latest sales flyer for all of the details upcoming. Uh, we'd love to get LDP and the SEGA printer into your laboratory to help you uh, get to the latest, the latest and greatest in denture technology. And we can do that with one of our financing options called Route 66. Route 66 does not require any payments for six months. So you can get 
LDP and the ASIGA in there working for you for six months before you have to make a payment with also no accruing interest. So contact your Zon representative for more information on that as well. And thank you so much again, David. We really appreciate you joining us today on Zon Academy with all of your great information on LDP. Sure, thank you, Fran. So I know we still have a couple of minutes left. So if anyone wants to unmute or type in a question in the chat box, we can certainly do that. It was yeah, a lot of information absolutely. in a short amount of time. Absolutely, definitely a lot of information, a lot of great information. Um, again, 50% of our attendees are printing, 50% um, aren't. So maybe this is uh, gonna give some people some insight on um, getting going, right? I hope so. I mean, everyone thinks it's the future and, you know, the most labs I talk to, it's it's today, it's here, it's it's now, why wait? Um, you know, three years ago, I would have said, wait a little bit, things are going to get better. Um, and I, I think things will always get better. The software will get easier, the scanners will get more accurate, but the workflow is solid. So people are having a lot of success with it. And let's oh, see. we have Sam asking you a question. He wants to know how you grew such beautiful <laughs> uh, How you doing, Sam? So nice. Um, <laughs> I want to thank all of our attendees out there as well. Please check your inbox. In the next couple of days, there will be um, a special promotion just for watching this webinar. And it's only good for about a week. So if you'd like to take advantage of that, also contact your uh, Zon representative and they'd be happy to help you with it. All right. So, uh, Fran, uh, just while we got another minute or two and then we, we can certainly, you know, uh, end it. Um, what What's your experience with Lucitone Digital Print? You know, I know you've seen a couple of roadshows. You've been present at some roadshows and you actually mm -hmm. made a denture. So I did. I, I was able to come to um, your North Carolina um, facility and I'm a registered dental hygienist. So that's why, I mean, I'm pretty good with the hand piece, but I've never, you know, uh, created my own denture and it was very easy, ease of use. I have to say, you know, and, and you follow all the steps, really, you can have a, a beautiful denture, um, very easy to do. And that was my feeling on it. I work for a prosthodontist as well as general dentist. Um, and I brought them back with me and they couldn't believe that I actually made that specific denture. It's beautiful. Um, believe me, I'm probably not as good as all of you technicians out there and CDTs, but it was very easy for me to do. Um, as far as the road shows go, people are very interested. People are loving the material when we check back with them, because of course, you know, we always um, go back and, and call and ask some questions to see if our customers are doing fine with what they purchased from us. And so far, we've had very, very good results with LDP. So. So Brian asks a question. Can you paint step three on the denture again for a full shine and recure it after already curing a denture? The answer is yes, as long as you have a validated printer. So yes, I'm, I'm sorry, a validated curing unit. So one of our curing units, yes, you can. Um, and a question I always get too is um, if you look at this denture here, you know, you paint sealer on everything. Of course, let, let, let's just assume the teeth have been bonded. Uh, what do you, how do you handle the T bars? When people cut off the T bars, what they normally typically do is they'll just spot polish just where the T bars were with a silicone impregnated wheel. They will not put Fuse 3 total on those little spots and stick it in and cure it all over again. So, uh, they'll do a hand polish there. Uh, and then Sam states he's been using LDP for about eight months and very happy with it. I've had issues with staining around the gingiva margins and the teeth themselves. Um, so when you say staining, is that going to be white stains or is that going to be darker stains? Uh, we did do a coffee stain test and we soaked uh, these dentures in a highly concentrated version of coffee for 70 hours and did not see any staining from that. So that staining could be unsealed surfaces. It could be maybe better polishing or if it's a white spot, it could be uh, excess alcohol coming out of the denture 
one to two weeks later on. Uh, we find that if someone pushes their alcohol, uses dirty alcohol, or they don't sufficiently clean the excess resin off, that will sometimes uh, work its way through the fuse as white spots or streaks two or three weeks after the denture has been delivered. Uh, what's the difference between larger and small curing units? Um, the the main difference is the size and the cost. They they are both have the same heat and wavelength. The most important thing about the small curing unit is the small curing unit, the lights come on right away. So it tack cures the fuse three total and uh, starts the curing process. The large curing unit actually heats up first, then the lights come on. Um, so that's part of the difference in time. Uh, and it's important that if you're using the large curing unit, that you tack the entire fuse three total first prior than putting it into the large curing unit. Because otherwise the large curing unit, you put your denture in, it's nothing's cured yet. You paint it on fuse three total. And as it's heating up, the fuse three total will seep and run off the denture, causing some bare spots. Um, so the uh, smaller unit, I personally prefer it but both are phenomenal. It really comes down to how many dentures do you wanna do at once?